Welcome to lecture number five. In this session I will give an example of generating an aircraft model from scratch. I won't go into details of choices that determine the accuracy of modeling. That will be done gradually over the next several lectures. There is no fundamental distinction between modeling an existing aircraft or a new project. In essence, we specify a series of parameters that define a point design. The point design has a set geometry. It has set weights determined by some combination of calculations and or fixed input. And it has aerodynamic characteristics that are calculated but may have been adjusted or overridden in a variety of ways. It will also be linked to some particular engine characteristics with scalable thrust ratings and fuel flows. Aircraft performance is always determined from first principles for any flight condition and any mission. If you need more details, you can always find the user's guide here or in the web in piano.aero. When creating a new model, you can always examine existing planes in the database to inform you about design choices or best guesses. Database planes generally include nodes that give at least an indication of how well they're calibrated. And by calibrated, I mean adjusted in many different ways to accurately reflect any manner of known characteristics. We will assume a simple typical requirement for a 100-seater with a range between 1500 and 2000 nautical miles and takeoff field length in the region of 5000 feet. So let's get started. There are 279 parameters. out of which 15 are vital parameters shown in red and these have to be supplied before Piano can generate an initial point design. Most of them are defaulted, shown in black, and some of them are calculable, shown in green, and these parameters will set their own values using some internal methodology unless you explicitly override them with your own value. Some examples. The number of passengers is a vital parameter and that has to be supplied. The mass per passenger has a default of 95 kilograms and the number of cabin crew will be calculated on the basis of the number of passengers unless you override it. We'll start with the new plane palette, which shows all the vitals plus a few more. The number of passengers. Each parameter has some help. I may sometimes show such help very briefly, so if you want to read it, you can pause the video just to avoid slowing down the narration. So we enter 100 passengers. Typically these might be in a five abreast layout. In a fuselage width of something in the region of three and a half meters. I can toggle the units here, it's about eleven and a half feet. The fuselage length comes in three parts. Mid is the portion that has a constant cross section. say an ellipse or a double bubble, and the front and back can have arbitrary shapes. There are default shapes and a shape editor. So you can provide a number of stations upper heights, lower heights and widths to define the contours of the shape. You can input these in any units. Whenever you load the shape it will be automatically adjusted to the current fuselage dimensions. So we might expect a fuselage length in the region of 30 meters. I will assume that about half of that is in the mid fuselage. So you can do arithmetic in piano and I will type in 30 divided by 2. 
and then the remaining 15 meters will be split between the front and the rear. Let's say that two-thirds of that are at the rear in a sort of teardrop proportion. So we put in 15 times two-thirds and then the remainder is at the front which would be 30 the total minus what we have input so far and that's 5 meters. The MTOW is one of the basic sizing parameters together with the wing area, the aspect ratio and the thrust actually look at them here. Let's remove that top one. So MTOW thrust, wing area and aspect ratio. And the values that I will input for these will be simply first guesses and they will have to be determined subsequently on the basis of our design requirement. MTOW might be in the region of a hundred thousand pounds that would be about 45.3 tons. Let's round it up in metric terms, so we'll put in 50 tons. We will define a simple trapezoidal platform for the wing. So the wing area, taper ratio and the aspect ratio are all going to be trapezoidal values. And I will go into alternative wing area definitions later on. That is our trapezoidal definition. We could guess a wing area from typical wing loadings, or we might say that our expectation for the span is of the order of 30 meters, so we can get a wing area from the relationship between span, aspect ratio and wing area. So if I type in 30 squared divided by typical aspect ratio, let's say 9, I get a wing area of 100 square meters, or if I toggle the units, 1,076 square feet. Aspect ratio. We could alternatively have provided the span definition. That's why this is a calculable parameter. I will type in 9. This aircraft would typically be expected to cruise at around about Mach 0.78 and I will put in a sweep back of 25 degrees for that. Aerofoil thickness cord ratio at the root, 15% or 0.15. Taper ratio, tip over center line might be somewhere between 0.25 or 0.3. Let's type in 0.25 plus 0.3 divided by 2. Design cruise Mac and design cruiser altitude are needed to prepare pianos aerodynamic and weight methodologies. The design cruise Mac is our expectation of the highest Mach number to be used in normal operations, somewhere around MMO or maximum operating Mach number. I will set a typical value of 0.82 given our cruise Mach expectations. The design cruise altitude is our expectation of a representative cruise altitude typically nearer to initial cruise altitude or an average, not the maximum operating altitude. I will put in 36,000 feet, near enough to the tropopause. If in doubt you can use 35,000 feet for most aircraft or 25,000 for turboprops or 40,000 for business jets. Reference thrust per engine is the thrust to which our engine will be scaled when it is loaded. A hundred seater might typically have engines between 15,000 and 20,000 pounds in thrust. I will put in 16,000 pounds, which is roughly 71 kilonewtons. And with that might go in a cell that is about six feet in diameter, 1.83 meters roughly. At the moment these are two independent parameters but I will associate them with each other later on when I load an engine. 
nacelles mounted on wing that determines the location and number of nacelles so for example 0 0.3 0 0.5 means a nacelle at 30 percent and 50 percent of the exposed semi-span let's put in 0 0.25 there are no nacelles mounted on the fuselage so I can just leave this empty and we have now defined all the red or vital parameters plus a few more and might expect that we will be able to do a first point design as soon as you ask for any kind of output piano will try to do a geometry mass and balance calculation if it is able to let's try that try a three view so it tells us that it can't accommodate the number of passengers in the fuselage and the simple reason for that if we look at the fuselage geometry is that by default the assumption is that passengers will only go in the mid fuselage so let's take this parameter here cabin in front fuselage fraction and let's say that a quarter of the front fuselage length is also available for passenger accommodation similarly for the rear fuselage and try again so we have our first point design you can see that there are a lot of default assumptions that have been made uh, low wing configuration conventional tail the nacelles are located fully ahead of the leading edge and many other assumptions this point is the junction between the front and mid fuselage so you can see the quarter of the front fuselage that is now occupied similarly for the rear fuselage let's stretch them out a little bit so I will increase that to 0.3 and the rear fuselage fraction to 0.4 draw it again if we look at the seating there is a cabin seat pitch parameter at the moment it's about 34 inches let's reduce it to 31 draw it again there is infinite variety in layouts of passenger accommodation or LOPAS piano simply draws a uniform layout at an effective average pitch this is only intended as a visual cue to show occupied space plus margins for the galleys restrooms emergency exits etc although in this case it is actually close to an actual single class layout so the fuselage is realistic let's take a quick look at the nacelles and I will push them back a little bit there is a parameter called nacelle location ahead of wing if I reduce that to three quarters then they're pushed back slung under the fuselage I can change the nacelle depth and nacelle length but I will not do that now wing geometry we're going to enter a platform break twenty five percent of the exposed semi span so we have this the wing is currently fifteen percent uniformly but we can have a thickness break as well which will normally coincide with the platform break the thickness cord at the breakpoint will be determined as a ratio in terms of the root value so this might be 80% or 70% for example if I wanted a 12% thickness cord ratio at the breakpoint I would type in 12 divided by 15 which is our root value and for the tip if we wanted a 10% thick aerofoil I type in 10 divided by 15 do a geometric report we have thickness cord at the root 15% at the breakpoint 12% at the tip 10% and you can see the change in the front view let's move our undercarriage a little bit inboard spanwise location eta 15% reduce it to 10% 
Every time anything changes, Piano does a geometry mass and balance calculation. I will take a quick look at the trim and balance palette. The internal methodologies will use statistics and things like tail volume coefficients. One way to control the balance would be through the fixed equipment CG fraction. So this is the location of the CG of all fixed equipment as a fraction of the fuselage length. At the moment it is assumed to be located at 45%. If I wanted to move it slightly backwards I could say 0.45 plus 0.5 divided by 2 halfway between. Draw the aircraft again and the wing will have moved slightly backward. So what we have done so far is to take a quick look at all the palettes that deal with the major geometric components, fuselage, nacelles, wing, tailplane, undercarriage. And so far we have entered 11 parameters that have been disturbed away from the default setting, plus the 15 red vital ones. What I will do now is I will run through all the palettes from top to bottom in sequence just to give you an indication of what is there and most of these values I will simply be leaving at their default. So this palette determines the zero lift and induced drag calculations and I can change things like the wing transition, apply factors on the various drags, compressibility, various parameters that are used to tune up the compressibility calculations. I will not be changing any of those either engine parameters we have simply input our thrust here and I can now go and load an engine a medium bypass engine this one and now I have a fully defined set of engine characteristics things like fuel flows takeoff cruise continuous ratings climb ratings idle thrusts and fuel flows this example is the maximum continuous rating and all of these will have been adjusted to a thrust of 16,000 pounds so I can get the point performance 35,000 feet in Mach 0.8 and I get thrusts and fuel flows let me now go under plane and select nacelle scaling so I will click on auto scale the nacelles and now the nacelle width and the thrust are connected so if I increase that by 50% I get a bigger nacelle and the wing will have moved forward if I half this result get a very small nacelle and the wing has moved backward and I can go and recover my original value. Piano keeps track of the recently entered values. 16,000 pounds and we're back where we started. Fuel capacity. The geometric capacity is the black area. So I can change the spar locations for example to adjust that capacity or I can say that this center section is wet or dry center section is wet set it to false draw it again and that is now dry I will leave it like that because fuel capacity is not normally a problem for an aircraft of this type fuselage geometry I have already been through and cabin I have mentioned high lift devices these will determine the calculations of CL max and flap weights, for example. Flap type, set it to single slot fowler. A default setting of 15 degrees for the takeoff flap. And let's put in 35 degrees for the landing. Landing these parameters obviously appear in this palette as well our approach speed ratio is currently at 1.3 we might want to use the value that is common for modern 1G certifications so I can type in 1.23 if we have a fly-by-wire airplane 
and similarly for the takeoff the V2 speed ratio which is currently at 1.2 I can set it to 1.13 so if I look at the most recently defined parameters you might think that it would be convenient to have a collection of default settings and indeed that is possible so I could have gone under here and loaded a set of values in this case my takeoff and landing preferences which in fact happen to be precisely the values that I have just entered looking at mass parameters for the design case we have entered 100 passengers and 95 kilos per passenger is the default and cargo mass is zero so that determines our design payload I will enter a maximum payload that is 20% larger than that so 1.2 here and that will be the main determinant of our MZFW the maximum landing mass ratio is set by default at 1.07 so that's the ratio of maximum landing weight to MZFW and I will leave it at that furnishings mass per passenger an important parameter that is very much dependent on the operator I will put in 45 kilograms per passenger for long-range twin aisle aircraft it might be nearly double that and I will leave everything else as it is power plants weight I will make no changes and let piano use its own internal estimation on the basis of the thrust and other parameters I could adjust individual structural components with factors for example I will change nothing here methods there is a variety of different methods that can be used in piano and I will leave everything at the default miscellaneous allows me to change things like buffet and aeroelasticity cell geometry we've looked at and I will not make any further changes names of linked files in this case we have a linked file which is simply the engine and I could click on this parameter and get the same dialog as I got when I loaded the engine other files that are linked at the moment the shapes of the front and rear fuselage which are the defaults and I can click those and load other shapes if I wanted to and also if there are any aerodynamic characteristics that are externally defined they can be linked in as files fixed polar name and polar modifications and for the low speed aerodynamics as well new plane is the palette we have been using operating costs if I wanted to select a cost method I would do it from here short range method for example and you can set up all the various prices and other parameters pressurization I will leave everything at the default reserves and allowances currently doing 200 nautical miles diversion 30 minute hold and a contingency of 5% of mission fuel I could again go and load my preferences for example I can load reserve files from here but let me just simply go and define a few additional parameters taxi out allowance of 10 minutes takeoff time allowance one and a half minutes approach time double that three minutes and taxi in time half of the taxi out at five minutes tail geometry things like aspect ratios and taper ratios can be adjusted here trim and balance takeoff I will not change anything and the carriage same again untitled that is just a temporary palette and you can in fact have as many new palettes as you want user factors I have not touched any of those and wing geometry is sufficient for the moment so we have so far disturbed 26 parameters plus our 15 vitals and that will be enough for our initial definition one more thing I will do is tell piano how to fly the aircraft now so looking at the range modes 
I can select a simple option, so I will just put in flight level 370 and specify Mach 0.78 and let it calculate its own climate descent schedule. And for the takeoff, sea level and ISA. So at the moment our point design will have some arbitrary performance as calculated. Let's look at what it does. So 2,531 nautical miles, a takeoff field length of 5,795 feet, landing field length is not a problem, 4,300, approach speed 119 knots. And I will now set up an optimization exercise to get it to meet our design requirements. Our variables will be the MTOW, the wing area, the thrust and the aspect ratio. These are the current values and they will be varied between some minimum and maximum values which are preset and quite broad. Click OK. Let us set up the constraints. So we will assume a requirement of let's say 1800 nautical miles between 1500 and 2000. Takeoff field length no more than 5,000 feet. Landing field length, we don't expect this to be active, but we'll put in 5,000 feet as well. And let's put in an approach speed of 125 knots. There is one constraint that is enabled by default, and that is the fuel volume ratio, and that simply ensures that there will be sufficient capacity to accommodate the design fuel requirement. The objective function that we want to minimize will be, let's say, the DOC or the MTOW or the fuel mass, selecting DOC. I will leave the tolerances for the convergence criteria at their default and start the optimizer. There's a lot that can be said about the optimizer, but I will let you take a look at the user's guide for that. So I have now let this run for its full course, which involved 100 restarts to make sure we don't get locked into local minima. This took about 1.9 minutes and we have ended up with an MTOW of about 46 tons, a wing area of 92 square meters, a thrust of 16,420 pounds and an aspect ratio of about 9.3. So this is our current design. And if we look at the range report, it is 1,800 nautical miles. And our takeoff field length is 5,000 feet. Landing field length is 4,475, so that is not an active constraint. And approach speed is 123 knots, so that's not active either. The plane is automatically saved to a file called OptiAfter at the end of any optimization. I can also flag the plane, which is a convenient way of saving designs temporarily without creating a new file. You can name a flag or just use its date stamp. Piano keeps the 15 most recent flags and if you create more, the oldest ones gradually fall off the end. And now we have our design which meets all the design requirements and we can do all the normal calculations with it. We can look at payload ranges, we can look at drag reports, geometric statements, mass breakdowns, etc. And although this has been a very simple example definition of an aircraft, it is in fact pretty close to a design project from the 1990s, the Aerospatial AS100. 
so I can compare these two this is our AS100 file and I will compare it to our Opti after file which is our current aircraft so the yellow one is the Opti after and the red one is the AS100 and you can see the similarities in the values over here and the payload ranges Opti after is slightly heavier with a longer range but in fact I can compare the ER version of the AS100 as well And you can see that the Opti after aircraft is in the space between the AS100 and the AS100ER. So let's load the Opti after. An alternative to running the optimization would have been to do a parametric study. So we will be changing wing area and thrust. Let's say the wing area we can look between 75 square meters to 125 square meters in steps of 5. And the thrust between 15,000 pounds and 20,000 by 500 pounds. And in each case, I will iterate for 1,800 nautical miles. The output will be saved on file. So now we can examine several different outputs. The MTOW, so wing area down here, and each color is a different thrust. block fuel and DOC so these will make a little bit more sense if I define some cross plots so we are going to put in four and a half thousand feet for the takeoff field length and five thousand which was our requirement and fifty five hundred and for the approach speed let's put in 120 125 and 130 knots And now, if we look at these curves, and assume we wanted a takeoff field length of four and a half thousand feet maximum, then we can track this line here and an approach of 120 knots maximum, then that would be this line over here. So at the intersection down here would be the lowest possible MTOW about 47.4 tons and that would correspond to a thrust just under 18,000 pounds or if the TOFL is 5,000 feet then the minimum weight would be about 46 tons and we can look at the other parameters for example the block fuel Minimum block fuel would be about 7,500 if we have a field length requirement of 5,000 feet. And DOC, the white point actually represents our current design, Opti After, so it is indeed at the minimum for a constraint of 5,000 feet of takeoff field length. And you can immediately see the behavior of the aircraft for any combination of uh, wing area and thrust. So this shows a typical simple parametric sizing exercise. Now what if we want to match a known geometry and known weights, for example to match a manufacturer specification? Let us start with our Opti aircraft and assume that we have a particular geometry for the wing. Obviously you can change any parameters from here but if you want to specify a 
different wing area definition we can select resize wing from here select the Airbus definition and let's say that we want that to be exactly 100 square meters and the overall span to be 30 I will let you read the help redesign that to a geometric report and now you can see that our Airbus wing area is precisely 100 and the span is 30 meters the trapezoidal reference wing area is 94.24 and let us say that the fuel capacity is set to 15 cubic meters and we can also set tail areas as well 25 square meters for the stabilizer 15 square meters for the fin redesign so our geometric report now 25 square meters for the stabilizer 15 for the fin total available capacity 15 cubic meters and that is how our aircraft looks we can also locate the wing where we want this parameter the wing apex fuselage fraction will give us the longitudinal wing location as a distance from the nose of the aircraft divided by the fuselage length so if I put in precisely 0.31 that will be the distance from the apex, this point here, to the front fuselage as a fraction of the fuselage length. And finally we can set up specific certification weights from the manufacturer. Let us say an OEW of 27,500. Keep it frozen if we make any parametric changes. MTOW 46,100 kilograms MZFW 38,700 MLW 41,500 and do our weight report and we get the right certification weights plus the right OEW and this gives you an indication of the kinds of things that you can do to match a specific aircraft definition. Let's flag this aircraft as well. I will call it 100B. I can briefly show you a few more things we could do. For example, I can load an existing aircraft. This is an Avro regional jet. I can select the fuselage geometry palette copy all the values from this palette go back to our previous aircraft the 100B and apply the copies to that and now I have an aircraft with a fuselage of the Avro RJ or I could go and load a predefined fuselage like this one and this has different shapes and slightly different settings so our fuselage width is 3.45 slightly narrower than our original fuselage but this time the depth is 1.05 times the width and it has a double bubble fuselage I can swap units then go under wing sizing specify a Boeing Wimpress area of a thousand square feet and a span of a hundred feet redesign that set the fuel capacity of 3500 US gallons tail areas of 270 square feet and 160 square feet OEW of 60,600 round off all the other weights
1,000 square feet of Wimpress wing area, 100 foot span, 3,500 US gallons. Range calculations, I have toggled the units, so that comes out in kilometers. If I toggle back, it comes out in nautical miles, 1,760. I can change my combination, for example, weight in pounds. Do a payload range. Flag the aircraft as 100C. And this is what it looks like. I hope this has given you a good indication of what it's like to define a new aircraft from scratch. In the next session, we will look at a more detailed aircraft definition. That will also serve as our starting point for generating a 787 from scratch.